Hello, YouTube. All right, we've got a lot of the stuff stripped out of here because my parts arrived from Newegg today, and we're going to do an upgrade. Here is the drive that used to be in the computer, a Seagate Barracuda 7200.12, 500 gigabytes. 500 gigs is nice, but I need more space, and Seagate is generally trash. <laughs> Their hard drives fail quite often, so yeah. Good hard drive, I'll be keeping it, but I'm not going to expect anything to stay on there permanently anyway. Here's the DVD drive. Light on. It's just your standard SATA hard drive, and I have to use SATA because on the board of this drive, as you can see right here, they have IDE soldered joints, but they don't have a, a thing on there. So I don't know if the BIOS supports it at all. So, you know, yeah. All right, now we move over to the stuff I got. And today, as I move, as I uh, hastily move all this crap, we have two things. We have a card reader to replace the floppy drive that was in this computer, which is this literally this random Mitsumi floppy drive. It was there as a placeholder, pretty much. So instead I got a card reader to make it something useful, and the card reader happens to have a USB port on it, so it just gives me some extra USB. So why don't we unbox that? There we are. Very simple card reader. All right. We got a card reader here. And it takes XC, SD, micro SD, a USB, it takes memory sticks, and it takes compact flash. Now the compact flash I like a lot because my camera takes compact flash. And this was, supposedly these are made by Caltech, but it said something otherwise on the front. Soho USB. It supports Windows Vista. Derp. That's like saying a microwave works with Windows Vista. It comes with a white faceplate in case you have a white case, which I think is pretty nice. And it comes with mounting screws, which I probably won't be needing because this thing, because the Dell takes its own weird ass screws, which you'll see soon. That's the card reader. Here's something else. We have a hard drive. Yay. And here's new eggs packaging. Thick bubble wrap. Here's what I don't like. Bubbles popped here. Bump looks like it may have been bumped a little bit. A little uh alarming, but hopefully it didn't make the drive derp. So we'll find out. I'll open this up real quick. Here we have the hard drive. It is a Hitachi drive manufactured in May of last year. So let's get everything out of here. I'm just going to take it out real quick. Take it out of the bag anyway. Here you have it. A Hitachi hard drive. Hitachi DeskStar 1 terabyte drive. The board is quite tiny. Look at that. Very tiny. There's the controller. There's a controller made by LSI, and there's the Samsung. It uses a Sam. Uses, they use Samsung memory for the cache, which is nice. All made in Thailand. Alrighty. We have our new hard drive, which is very cold apparently because I'm getting condensation off my hand. Herder. So. Yeah, I might have to let that drive cool off a little bit first so that we don't get condensation inside there. All right, and this is what's going to go in the computer. First, I shall prepare the hard drive. Now, what a lot of these Dells do is they take these stupid caddies. I hate these things, but they keep the hard drive fairly secure, so I don't mind. Stick that in the caddy. All right, I made a total ass out of myself. It, I took the hard drive, or floppy drive from downstairs is NEC that was originally in this Dell 
and put it in. I didn't even notice this before, but there, because I mean, I've worked in this computer so long, there's a clip right there. I had the screw in the other hole. It doesn't have a clip. So hopefully this card reader will fit with the clip part this time. Yep, and it does. I'm a moron. Yay. All right, I used the twisty that came in the packaging to just make this wire a little shorter. This isn't the neatest thing in the world, but that's because there's normally nothing here, and then there's this random USB header over here. So, there we are. Now, there are things still left to be upgraded in this machine. I have an AMD Athlon X2 3800 Plus in there right now. 2.0 gigahertz. Very nice chip, but it's a little bit slow with today's standards. But the chip that originally came in this thing was worse. It was a single-core Athlon 64. 2.0 gigahertz, which was just abysmally slow when I used it. So, the one that's in here now is uh, so much better. So much better. And it runs all my crap just fine, so I don't really need to put another processor in there. It takes an AM2 slot, so I could buy a, new proce a newer processor and put it in there, which I might do at some point. I don't know yet. I probably will, but you never know. Depends on the money I make. Um, but here in this computer we have a Linksys wireless card. It does wireless N. So we have a Linksys wireless card with a Netgear antenna. How funny is that? <laughs> but this antenna is awesome. You can just move it anywhere and it'll get great signal. There's also the floppy port, which we won't be using, since the card reader's in there now. There's the onboard NVIDIA graphics. There's the chipset, which is probably Enforce. And there are things left to put in here. In here is going to go an ATI Radeon 5570. And here is going to go an Asus Zonar DX 7.1 low profile sound card. Asus makes some of the best sound cards you can get right now. So I'd highly recommend getting those. I'm also going to try replacing the power supply to see if the whine or the, noise, the noises it's making isn't just me being paranoid. And I'm also going to put an, a different fan in here. Now, Flaming Linux gave me a pretty cool uh, a fan replacement for this, but the bearings on it are a little worn, but that's because the fan is aged. I managed to find a refurbished one, and that's on its way as well, but we're not going to make a video of that because it's a fan. Fans are fans. Same with the power supply, because a power supply is a power supply. There's nothing exciting. So, let's put the top back on and fire this guy up. Well, this isn't exactly the top, but it's a cover. Side panel. There we are. All right, tower's back upright the way I like it. Let's get some light on this black part so you can see a little better. Here we are. Dell Dimension C521. There's the light on DVD drive. There's the card reader and everything. Beautiful machine. It used to have a TV tuner in it. It used to have one of these uh, Avermedia low-profile TV tuners in it. These are some of the best TV tuners you can get. This one's hybrid, analog, and digital, so you can do either one. Very much like that. But that is going to be switched out for a sound card since I cannot really record TV anymore because the cable companies encrypt their channels. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, let's plug this thing back in. The power supply makes a funny noise when you plug it in. It, it goes like bonk, like a little arc or something, but that's nothing unusual. Okay, and we're going to install Windows on this, so we need an Ethernet cable, which is in a drawer. So let's go to my drawer of doom and get out my ridiculous... Um, stop it. My ridiculously long cable. It's a 50-foot Ethernet cable. Plug that into the router. This camera work is atrocious, I know, but I'm trying to get this done. Plug this into the back of the router. Now this router's repeating, or not repeating. It's like I've put DDWRT on this router and it's set up as a client bridge. So it's literally like just your ordinary router. It's an extension to my other one. So. Running cables across the floor is messy. I don't like this, but 
I have to do it. Plug this into the back here. If I could do it the right way, that would be important. All right, and the lights have come on, so that's good. Of course, got to put the Netgear antenna on top. And here we are. Now let's boot it up and see if the hard drive works. Roaring fan. It does that every uh, first boot or so. It is going to run Ubuntu and Windows 7. So, All right. No boot device detected because I didn't install anything yet. So let's get a 7 CD and yeah, get this thing underway. Ow. There we are, Windows 7 CD. Windows 7 Professional 64 bit. I'm going in. So I'll press F1 to continue. And the Windows setup commences. Yay. As it reads stuff. And the next part is just installing Windows. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, yeah. All right, the operating systems are all good to go now. So I can show you my fin nearly finished product. It still has a ways to go as far as upgrading. But you'll see those upgrades as videos come along, so not a big deal. I changed the monitor to a uh, back to my cheap Chaya Fail monitor that was on the server setup. Because this one can actually focus on uh, the picture properly. The Acer one cannot. So I've put that one onto the server, which I've moved up here, by the way. Anyhow, let's show you this guy. I've been running this thing for a few days and the hard drive still works, so, cool. As you can see, I've got Ubuntu and Windows on here. Let's start with Windows. So, <clears throat> on the video you saw before, it was basically the... Uh, it's a s similar to the same Windows install you saw when I had the Seagate hard drive in here. So it's nothing really that special, but I thought I'd just show it just for proof of point. Forgot to turn the sound on, so I turned the Sansui on. There you go. Windows works. Without, without a hitch. Lol. So there you have it. Windows works. Now let's check out Linux. Alright, Ubuntu. It's Ubuntu 10.1064 bit that I'm running on this particular machine. It's just sitting there reading the drive. Gives you a bunch of crap. Then you get that. The GNOME panel has issues. The GNOME panel has issues sometimes. <laughs> so the icons get all derped up like that. Yeah, GNOME panel is annoying. Anyhow, there's my Linux setup. One of the default backgrounds that I'll probably change at some point in the future, but as you can see, everything works just fine. 
One thing I haven't showed you is uh, the stats of this thing in Linux. So, here we are. I got my, uh, it's not using much memory out of my 4 gigs, a couple of which are being used for the onboard video. It's not using any swap, but occasionally it uses a, a little bit of swap. Uh, <clears throat> system. There you go. Ubuntu 10.10, Maverick. There's the kernel version, there's the GNOME version, there's the processor. And I've split the disk up and I've split the one terabyte Hitachi drive into two partitions, both 500 gigabytes. Well, not two partitions, but two separate, you know, things. I'll show you in uh, disk utility. Let's full screen that. And go to the uh, hard drive. There you go, the Hitachi. This is how the partitions are set up. I have system reserve for Windows, 500 gig for Windows. I have the extended partition, which is this separate 500 gigs that I told you about. And in there, I've got root partition, swap, and home partition. There you have it. So now I have a uh, Linux box set up. And as you can see, the disk is healthy. The smart data says there's nothing wrong with it. I've only turned the drive on 20 times. And everything in here looks ship shape. So there's nothing wrong with this drive out of the box. Hopefully it won't clunk on me at some point. And then, you know, make me sad face. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, for now, that's how the Dell is. Once I get the graphics card and the sound card, I'll uh, keep you guys up to date on those. But for now, that's how she is. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.